I suppose the survival of the Channel Island patois is an accident of history. I mean, William the Conqueror and his successors built a huge empire in western France, stretching from Normandy to the Pyrenees, and of course added England on the way. And um, it, it stayed unified until, what was it, um, I think King John lost it in 1214. <laughs> um, to the Capetian dynasty in, in Paris. Um, but almost by accident, he re retained the islands. How? I, don't, I, I, I haven't gone into it, but probably historians here would enlighten you. Um, but this political isolation probably explains the sort of archaic character of these dialects. Um, we speak a French which doesn't seem to have changed much since the 12th century. Um, and similar patois are spoken across the water, across the race of Albany, or rather, should I say, Le Rats d'Origny, Le Rats Melchard, um, which a little, bit, a, a little, if anybody tells you the Ile de Rats, Longy Fort, is called that because of the rats, it's nonsense. The rats is the patois pronunciation of the race. The rats, the rats, the rats, the rats. Um, that's a, a little aside. Um, unfortunately, all our patois since the 18th century have been inexorably replaced by English. Um, however, as late as 1930s, there are still people like my great-grandmother, um, Rachel Elizabeth Sabir, um, who couldn't speak English. Uh, obviously, she spoke French and she spoke the Fatima, but no English at all. I, I know she used to trot out at, at, at dinner parties a phrase that she'd learn just to amuse people with. Um, she'd stand up and say, Mr. Shakespeare, come to town. Hello, goodbye. But who the hell taught her this nonsense? I don't know. <laughs> she was in old age, though, um, if you go to the four, te four generations. Well, that was how she, uh, she actually, um, her, um, her people used to run the uh, drivers in. And um, she occasionally served behind the bar. Now, this handsome gentleman here is a, a half pilot from the half, uh, Louis Augustin Rotz, R-O-T-S, um, who, like all pilots, stayed hovering in the mouth of the channel, waiting to pick up, uh, to board incoming craft bound for various ports and to pilot them in for the last bit of the journey, which would always be rather tricky. Mm -hmm. And obviously, frequently, he put in to Alderney for a rest, which is a handy anchorage. And I think that's how they met. met. So, um, uh, so um, she, she married him. Uh, she, he, she, she, she was his third wife. Um, the other wives died, probably the exhaustion or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, so they were getting so she had a no English, whatever. Um, my grandmother was bilingual. Um, uh, she's in, in the back there. <laughs> so was my mother. In fact, my um, Russia and Elizabeth's daughter, Alice, um, she insisted that my mother and my aunt uh, to, went to stay in Havre <coughs> for long periods to learn French because she didn't want them to lose you know, their, their mother tongue. Um, so they were bilingual. And um, so in my early youth, you know, well, you see the chubby chops in the front there, that's me. Um, I, I was surrounded by this monstrous regiment of women uh, who dominated me, apparently. Um, as you can see, my great grandmother was a terrifying lady. Um, one of her first duties was to sort of teach me how to use the earth closet, the La Petite Maison, at the bottom of the garden, to make sure I didn't fall down the, the, the hole. <laughs> But, um, and I, I, oddly enough, I, I, my first patois word, ha ha, which in French is caca, I learned from that. Uh, it, means, it means poo. <laughs> well, you've got to start somewhere. You might as well start at the bottom. Literally. <laughs> um, um, and then during the 18th and 19th centuries, Alderney profited.
acted enormously by smuggling mm. and by privateering. Mm. Uh, the Le Measure family had their own privateer, a topsail schooner, which raided French coastal shipping and uh, brought mm -hmm. back the goods to Albany. And, um, and two of my ancestors, Peter and Nicholas Lecoque, made an absolute fortune smuggling uh, booze <coughs> to the coast of Dorset and Devon. Um, <laughs> This had a, a, a linguistic start because the, <coughs> in Albany you've got the alternative word tanky for merci. Well, obviously tanky is West Country. Or oh, tanky, sir. You know, so um, tanky, thank you. Is, this was the, probably the, the thin, edge of, thin end of the wedge. <laughs> the start of a gradual process. Um, of course, um, the Lemaitre family built, of course, the, the old quay, what they call the Douglas Quay down at Bray, and all the old warehouses along there with enormous cellars to keep the wine in, which matured nicely, ready to be shipped across to England, dodging the revenue cutters. I think the local boats were like the French Biscayne. They were luxury mm, like uh, boats that could yeah. outpoint and outsail the, the, the revenue cutters, <laughs> so they needed to be bloody good seamen. Um, as you, well, you, they weren't caught, so they must have been good. Um, and of course, then later on, in the 1840s, when Alderney was heavily fortified, a, a substantial permanent Anglophone British garrison established, was established. So the ability to speak English became a commercial advantage. And the slow decline, decline of the patois began. And this speeded up later, at the end of the century, at the beginning of the 20th century, with the introduction of the quarrying industry that employed, that employed an army of skilled workers, mainly from Cornwall, but some from the Cotentin. Um, and, um, you know, the final de death blow came with the total evacuation in 1940, when, you know, you lost contact with grandparents and parents. <coughs> uh, uh, you know, many of the children were separated from their parents for, 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 for some extraordinary reason. Um, so this connection was broken, <coughs> cut, sharper than in the other islands. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Dr. Lemaitre, Le Mestre, who's written a book on the patois, blames the women for this. I think unfairly, because I think it's simply because women are more probably aware of social trends and they realize, you know, the way the wind is blowing and try to prepare their children to prepare themselves for it so that to, to speak English was an advantage. Um, uh, and, you know, it's, things like accent are important, you know. I mean, if I, if I didn't sound like Henry Blofeld, you might not be paying so much attention to me. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I was shocked when I heard this. I mean, I've got a tape to go with the book, and I heard myself, and I had a shock. I think, my God, who's this posh old twit? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so I didn't know I sounded like that. I thought I sound, sounded common, but there we are. Um, um, so when the population returned, only a handful of elderly people still spoke the patois among themselves. Um, my grandparents, Daniel and Alice Le Coke, Alf Tougy, Mr. Herrival from Blaye Farm, Madame Picot, Monsieur Charles Baptiste, the, the Greffier, or Tom Berland, and perhaps five or six more. Um, a larger number of islanders, however, like my mother and my aunt Wilma, could remember it and understand a fair amount. But they treated it as a quaint oddity, and they never attempted to speak it, either to me or among themselves. Um, I would have learned a lot more from my grandfather, but I went to boarding school in Guernsey, well, I went to school in, or in England, of course, but joined the Elizabeth College in Guernsey after the war. Um, and my grandmother, being half French, preferred me to learn Le Bon Francais, because she thought she rather looked down on the, 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 the Papua. Um, so, because she didn't want me to be considered as uneducated, which was very unfair, <laughs> but there we are. Um, um, however, my first inkling of the historical significance of Arunier came when, age 14, I was digging potatoes with my granddad on the Grand Blay. He had a strip of land and he harvested potatoes every year. 
Um, and I know I got really mucky, I got soil all over my trousers, and he remarked, Te break, son sao sugi. <laughs> now, the previous term, my class had been studying Caesar's De Bello Gallico, and in which he mentions that the Gauls wore a strange article of dress that they called brachai, trousers. Uh, the, 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 the Romans wore kilts of some sort, didn't they? Um, now, this ancient Celtic word has survived in, in, in English and Scots as breeches and breeks. And, um, and also, of course, in the patois of the islands. In fact, the islands, the island patois, like France, have quite about two or three hundred words of Gaulish origin. Um, the very word ally, to go, comes from a French, the Gaulish word alou. Um, bec, back, the beak. Once again, comes from Becos. Um, creme, cream, comes from the Gaulish meaning cramon, meaning skin or skim. And flanet, flanon, comes from the Gaulish vlana, wool. So, you know, all these islands, all these languages have such ancient roots hidden in, in, amongst them. It, it becomes a fascinating study. Um, he once told me, Je parle la langue du Dic Guillaume. At the time, I didn't pay much attention. Well, when you're young, whenever you do, you pay the attention to old people. <laughs> but later in life, oh. I read the 11th century Norman writers such as Wace, who was a Joyceman, and Gaimar, bless by des Anglais, des Anglais, and I realized that the old man wasn't far wrong. A couple of lines taken at random may show what I mean. The first one from Wace's Roman de Roux, lines uh, two, six, one, two, two to 6123, describing the preparations for the invasion of England. Cessant ne à Paris, de combattants un chargé. Soixante navires. Appareillé, um, well, six, six, six galleys, well apparelled, well prepared, well rigged, uh, loaded with fighting men, the combatants un chargé. And the second example from Gaimard's Espoir des Anglais, lines uh, 4157-4158, on the <coughs> Danish king Sven Falkvierd's conquest of Northumbria, where he says, Car l'Ire, Friends, who do conquis, a ve que son, a le pays. Now, to a patois speaking, it's not too, too difficult. Um, Con y re re, Swens, or two conquis, when the, the king Swain had conquered everything, a ve que son, a le pays. He saw that <coughs> the country was his. Um, now, there again, <coughs> Patois speaker would have no difficulty in, in, in understanding that, which suddenly made me realize that, you know, here we are in this island speaking 13th century French. Mm -hmm. um, probably an oversimplification, um, but nonetheless, the islands, because of their isolation, probably from the mainland France, did retain certain archaic uh, characteristics. And the the Rats Blanchard is a case in point, or uh, Monfils. My son, Maltese, uh, the, these are archaic features. Um, of course, this, com this language of ours, of ours was spoken, as my son, grandfather said, by Le Duc Guillaume. Um, <coughs> and that language has had a profound in 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 influence on English. Remember that the, the Norman Conquest was pretty nightmarish complete conquest. The, the whole, the flower of Anglo-Saxon nobility were killed at the Battle of Hastings, and most of those who survived fled east to serve as mercenaries in the Byzantine Emperor's Vrangian Guard, which traditionally recruited its members from warlike Scandinavians. So, you know, a whole ruling class was obliterated, which meant that English You've got this dichotomy, this division 
and this double phrases that we get in English. Uh, for instance, the new aristocracy sat on chair, which you sit on now. Um, the French sit, sit on chairs. Um, and they sat before a table, while the Saxon peasantry sat on benches before a board. I, you know, guest houses still advertise bed and board. Um, and of course, the normal nobles ate beef, mutton, pork, and veal. But the peasants cared for cows, sheep, swine, and calves, which the meat came from. So this, we tend in English to have different words for the same, two different words for the same thing, with different, slightly different meanings. Um, a certain class element, I suppose, you know, comes into it. I mean, you know, you say garage or garage, you know. <laughs> now, actually, Nancy Mitford said garage is you, because garage points you out as a pretentious middle class. My mother said garage because she, she spoke French for Christ's sake. <laughs> but the, you see, I mean, that language is so confusing. Um, well, not confusing, enjoyable. Um, how the, the Norman French loan words into English, they form something like 40% of its vocabulary. 40%. That really means some people sometimes question whether English is a Germanic language or a, a Romance language. Because, you know, um, it's quite easy, easy for us to learn French and Spanish, or even Italian, because we recognize the words. Population, you know. Uh, um, I, I'll get, but but the, the forms of, in English have kept their Norman French pronunciation. We say fork. In Papua, it's fork. In French, it's fourche. Um, um, we say chair. Well, as you, uh, you're sitting on one. Um, the French say chaise. Um, we chant in church. Chantai in Papua. Chante in French. Um, and you notice my grandfather's pronunciation of Guillaume. Not Guillaume, Guillaume. Well, we say William. And um, uh, let me think. Or Philly, a, female, a young female horse. Filia, but in French, filia, um, and, and so on. They're, they're, as I say, go through your French etymological, your English etymological dictionary, and you'll find, quite literally, 40% are of Norman French origin. Um, now, I think perhaps this is a point where I ought to read you a story in Patois, which will be appearing in my book, uh, Histoire en Porte Armier, hopefully next month, and I hope you all get, you all get in the old bookshop. <laughs> um, <coughs> um, when I read the story, if I give you, if I hand out, I've got 30 copies here, I hope you've got enough. Oh, thank you. Very good. Idea. When, we've, so we'll, when we've done that, we'll, we'll sing a song. Um, I hope it won't be too bad. Mrs. Mrs. Pond always sings off key. But, but, um, I'll, I'll survive. I'm not exactly, I'm not exactly bell counter. <laughs> You can all hear me, I hope. I'm not mumbling. No problem about that. No, no, no. Stentorian, I think, is the word. So. Everybody's on the phone. Yes, can you? So. Mon grand Daniel Sibirico, 
était tout à fait juré de la cour et lieutenant juge de l'île. Mais, quand il fut garçon, il était raide méchant. Souvent, il faisait des scoles bissantes pour qu'il pouvait aller au bâtiment ou à l'ésormais. Parfait, il faisait du camor dans les gardins d'une vieille dorme voisine où il pentoit des boudiacs à son buste de vin. Et non moins, la semaine de vin, le bout de l'eau, lui, dans sa bande de poules turques, il fit un grand boom de paille, bio graille de bio hard. Il gagnait un mât de sous. Il sert du coq nouveau, il commençait à plus vieux que Vax. Les jeunes Daniel, vous avez besoin, s'avisaient de mûcher son bout de l'eau dans la prise naissante au fin du jardin. Ce qui ne fait pas Gnézo, après tout, un bout de l'eau bouilli ne brûle pas bio. Plus tard, le soir, une vieille tante trottinait avant le jardin pour faire du pipi. En ouvrant les russes de la petite maison, on fut ravi d'un grand peur. On prend la fuite en galopage. On fait à la tisonne en hurloi à mener la grand grand-mère. Rachel, Rachel, il y a un dans la petite maison. Ouais, tu pas. On refusait de sortir. Et fit le pipi dans une bouchette derrière un paroi de feuille au coin de la tisoine. Mon arrière-grand-père était rayé dans le jabillon parce qu'il mangeait un bio bolet de coq devant les feuilles aux bousettes. Merde, il grognait. Et au mot, pas comme il faut. Je fiche le gars. Plus tard, la tisoine reçoit une bonne round. Son cul restait écafoué dans le jour de Thank you so much for coming to us. As the piece will be recorded in the book, we'll have three texts. Um, uh, you know, the patois, standard French, English, or no, it's the other way around. Yeah. Patois, English, as you've got, and then standard French. And there's a CD at the back of the book with voices exactly reading so. all the stories in patois. Mm. <coughs> well, that's your shit, my grandparents are right. <laughs> Now then, um, probably this is where <coughs> I launch into song. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, don't, you don't have to join in, Sally. But, you know, um, I don't have to. I do. Well, okay. <laughs> in the book. He's really very good. Oh, yeah. You want to up the actual. Let's see how it sounds, okay? Yeah. So this is the song we're going to sing. Yes. In Pact One. La, la Destinoi, La Rose in Um, If you want to join <laughs> in, it is very easy one to follow. Yes. Um, because it, there's a lot of repetition, as you can see. Um. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, my aussi, ma mère, na ve comme way des femmes. Mon père aussi, ma mère, na ve comme way des femmes. Alles for the new way, la destino y la rose y way. Alles for the new way, alles for the new way. Quand des filles me veillent, on voudrait mon brachier. Quand des filles me veillent, on voudrait mon brachier. On voudrait mon brachier, la destino y la rose y way. On voudrait mon brachier, on voudrait mon brachier. J'ai pas l'affaire des filles d'embracher les garçons. J'ai pas l'affaire des filles d'embracher les garçons. Don't brush your legs on the destiny of the rose and white. Don't brush your legs on. Don't brush your legs on. Mais c'est l'affaire des filles de bailler la maison. Mais c'est l'affaire des filles de bailler la maison. De bailler la maison, la destiny of the rose and white. De bailler la maison. De bailler la maison. Quand la maison est en bateau, tous les garçons y vont. Quand la maison est en bateau, tous les garçons y vont. Tous les garçons y vont, la destinée de la rose et de Tous les garçons y vont, tous les garçons y vont. Ils ont trop 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 en frappant du talent. Ils ont trop 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 en frappant du talent. 
Oh, frappe en tout talon, la destinée, moi, la rose et bouée. Oh, frappe en du talon, oh, frappe en du talon. C'est à chaque que se passe les choses dans notre coin. C'est à chaque que se passe les choses dans notre coin. Les choses dans notre coin, la destinée, moi, la rose et bouée. Les choses dans notre coin, les choses dans notre coin. Thank <laughs> you.